Well, I, I think the big killer in this society is sugar. Uh, you know, we eat over 100 pounds of sugar a year, which is just totally ridiculous. And uh, this consumption of sugar causes the growth of certain undesirable bugs, particularly candida in our gut, uh, which then can cause different reactions. And uh, some patients who get sensitive to this candida thing, we call it chronic candidiasis, then can't eat any sugar at all. I have patients with chronic candidiasis that the sugar of one grape will make them sick for a week. And so they have to stop even free fruit sugar. But I mean, everybody knows that sugar rots the kid's teeth, and yet they let the kid eat tea, eat, get, eat sugar. You know, it's like, here, kid, it's your Chris, it's Christmas. You can have your poison. You've been good. You can have poison. It's your birthday. It's poison. Easter, here's poison. You've been bad. You can't have your poison. I mean, it's really ridiculous. And so we should stop eating and feeding our kids all this sugar. Now, uh, as far as fats, uh, I want to keep people away from the trans fats and all that, but a good high quality uh, saturated fat, that's okay in moderate amounts. And the proteins in, in moderate amounts, I mean, I'm sort of on the uh, uh, Atkins way. Now, I caution people against what goes, goes under Atkins' name right now because uh, there are some things that I think Atkins would turn over in his grave over. Uh, that, that go under his name right now, but you look at his original books and he was really pretty much high protein, moderate fat, and low carbohydrate diet. Now, they keep saying that, well, you can't stay on this. Well, I have hundreds of patients that stay on this type of diet. They lose weight on it, they, get, they feel great, they, can't figure, they just have no difficulties doing that at all. Now, a lot of people who have difficulties in getting off of and staying on a diet is because they crave the very food that they're sensitive to. And, and this is one of the big problems. Uh, is like, for instance, if, if you go to Weight Watchers and they allow you to eat small amounts of carbohydrate or some food that you're allergic to. Now, you, they don't know it, you don't know it, but, but you might be allergic to some one of the foods like bread uh, and yet they allow you to take a little bit of bread, so you never lose the craving for bread, see? Whereas that I think maybe with the help of an orthomolecular physician or a clinical ecologist or somebody who understands food sensitivities, that you can figure out the foods that you're sensitive to and don't eat any of those foods, and that stops the craving. And nine-tenths of the time, the person loses weight on that, you see? So that this, this idea of suffering by cutting down on the food that you eat, just cutting out calories is, I think, ridiculous because everybody knows people who uh, eat, eat, eat all the time and they're skinny little things and yet you have other people that eat just a little bit and they get to be fat. So, you know, scratch that theory. Uh, w one of the reasons why people gain weight on carbohydrate and not so much on fats, and I realize that fat rhymes with fat, but that fats and proteins break down slowly in the body and don't raise the blood sugar very much. So most of that glucose which comes out of this is burned up as energy. Whereas carbohydrate digests rapidly, raises the blood sugar, and so then the body secretes insulin and drive and the insulin drives the glucose into the cells as fat. Also, when you're in this situation for a long time, it makes you relatively insulin resistant and then this can cause diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So that, uh, that's, that's why I'm so totally against these huge consumptions of sugar.